at 9.30 p.m. exclusively on Channel News Asia. Browsing around this luxury Italian high-end menswear store in Singapore, the rich wood and gold tones as well as the sleek style give little hint of the founder's journey from India to Russia when he was just 18. Umo Collezione, a multi-brand store, recently hit Asia, launching in Singapore in 2010. And I caught up with its founder to find out more about his journey and what the future holds for the brand. In 1983, communism was still very much alive in Russia. The Soviet Union was still at war with Afghanistan, a chapter of history which might have seen some businessmen shy away from expanding in Soviet Russia. But not for 18-year-old Johnny Manglani. Originally from India, he arrived in Moscow that year and he said he saw nothing but opportunity providing fashion to diplomats and expats. Russia was considered, Moscow was considered as a very hardship post. Uh, people were paid very well, foreigners living there, but they didn't have anything except the local Berioska, which was a state-owned shop. So I came there and I found success immediately. As Johnny and his familiarity with the landscape of his new home grew, so did his business aspirations. In 1998, as post-communist Russia defaulted, Johnny had committed to opening luxury menswear Italian store, Umo Collezione. I do business only in Moscow. 70% of the Russian wealth, uh, it's a resource-rich country, it's concentrated in Moscow. Um, we have opened boutiques in the regions, but um, the returns have been quite, you know, mere, quite, quite small. So we have focused on Moscow. We are um, located at each and every um, main uh, street in Moscow. Johnny landed in Singapore in 2008 with a property acquisition on his mind. He, however, departed Singapore after a two-day trip, not with property, but with two retail spaces at Integrated Resort, Marina Bay Sands. Well, again, it seems that my life is based on financial crises. We had a crisis in Russia in 2008 when the oil and gas prices fell rapidly. At that time, I realized that 100% invested in Russia. I don't have anything outside of Russia. While my Russian friends, they, have, they had established holiday homes in France, Italy, or second residences in London. I don't have anything outside of Russia, except for a few personal assets. So I decided that I would use the company cash to invest into properties in Asia, to get a good rental income. And obviously, um, at that time, Singapore also had a kind of, uh, you know, was suffering from the Asian economic crisis. Suddenly. I saw Marina Bay Sands coming up and I met the CEO of Marina Bay Sands. I came into his office unknown and within five minutes, you know, I signed the letter of intent. It's only when I came back to Moscow, I said, what have I gotten myself into? Can you quantify how successful have the shops here in Singapore actually been? Singapore is actually our window to Asia. Already by being based in Singapore, we are getting a lot of invitations to open businesses in neighboring countries. I see good potential in some of the neighboring countries, Indonesia, Malaysia, of course. I'm, I have scheduled a few business trips to, um, to I'm even going to Taiwan, uh, Taipei, in September. Can you tell me more about your concept and where it came from? What was the inspiration for you behind the concept of your brand? I always like to um, go the hard way. I always think that fashion for our customer should be an educational process also and uh, that they should be um, able to choose themselves what they want they should also be able to buy best of the best products from one point johnny adds that when doing business in russia he thinks like a russian and when doing business in singapore he thinks like a singaporean and that is that he is invested for the long term. You know, when we opened the first Omo Collezioni, I used to be 
not only the owner, but I used to be the main salesperson, the main rainmaker. Then a few years ago, I realized that one Johnny Manglani is not enough. I have to create, you know, junior Manglanis in the company. So my directors, who were always close to me, I gave them the power, I empowered them, um, and it worked, you know. So nowadays, our next point of growth in Russia is going to be, I want each, I have given a target to each and every director of mine that I want you within the next three years to have five boutiques. You're not going to run one boutique or two boutiques. Your target is five boutiques. So that means I have six very important people in my company. If each and every one of them go ahead and open three to four boutiques for the company, that's 20 more boutiques we will have. And it will be their responsibility. Same thing in Singapore. There is a very strong sense of ownership in my company. When I talk to people, somebody says, I will do this for you. I say, no, 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 wait. What are you doing for me? You're doing this for yourself. You know, you're fulfilling your potential. And that's our show for this week. If you have any questions or comments, you'll find us at channelnewsasia.com slash moneymind. You'll also find us on Facebook. And for a sneak peek at what we've got coming up in the next few weeks, check out this clip. The Money Mind team has been spotted hanging around Changi Prison. What are they doing there? Visiting somebody? Doing background research? Or could it be something bigger, like digging up the dirt on financial crime? Or maybe it's just something else entirely? If you think you know the answer or are good at making guesses, do drop us a note on our Facebook page or our message board on channelnewsasia.com slash moneymind. We're giving out investment books as prizes for the closest guesses and you might be a lucky winner and all will be revealed in the coming weeks. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.